Here's a little known but true fact about me. When I was in first grade, one night in my sleep, I was bitten by a bat, and that started me on my journey toward becoming Batman. Black. All important YouTube videos start with a black screen and music. Edgy, scary music that would make a quarantine student nervous. And logos. Really long and dramatic logos. Warner Bros. Why not Warner Brothers? I don't know. DC. The house that Batman built. Yeah. What, Superman? Come at me, bro. I'm your kryptonite. Hmm. I'm not sure what Rat Pack does. But that logo is macho. I dig it. Okay. Get yourself ready for some math. If you stop at general math, you're only going to make general math money. No. I said that. TMR, the math wizard, is very wise. I also have math skills and a nine pack. Yeah, I've got an extra ab. Now, let's start the lesson. Okay, so today we're continuing to do the same things, just in the reverse direction. Again, we're gonna use the A and B sheets. Uh, we'll be doing the part here on the left, the bottoms that you didn't do tomorrow, sort of like an L shape worth of problems. Uh, today, I think the easiest place to start is the reverse of where we ended yesterday, which is if we had a decimal, we made a percent by going right to. Today, if you have a percent and you want to make a decimal, just go left to. If you don't see a decimal, they are here at the end. So these numbers all have decimals at the very right end, they're invisible. So this, if we go left two positions, we'd have a point 30, but I'd rather have point three. We don't write the zeros at the end if we want to. This, if we go left two, there would be an empty space before the seven, so point oh seven. This, if we bring the decimal left two, we have a point four four four. We don't need to write that many fours. The four is repeating, so a single four with a bar is the simplest way to do that. This, if we bring the decimal left to, we have 0.5454. But we don't need to write 54 that many times. A single 54 with a bar to repeat it would be plenty. This, if we move the decimal left to, we get two more empty spaces, two more zeros to start with. So we get two new zeros, the original three zeros, plus an 80. This, if I go left twice, I have 2.00. I'd rather just have plain old 2 instead of 2.00, it's a little cleaner. And this, if we go left twice, we have 4.25 if we go left twice on those. That should be the easier part of the homework. If you have a percentage, just come left twice with the decimal, and now you have a lot of decimals. The harder part will be when we take the decimals and we make them fractions. So there's a few ways you could do this. One way would be to use your chart. If it has a bar on it, that's the only way you can really do this is to know them from the chart. So if you don't know the chart, you need to re-familiarize yourself with the chart before the quiz comes. So let me do the bar ones first. Uh, the point two with the bar, anything that has a single digit and a bar, that is from the ninths column, this one would be two ninths. If this had been a point seven with a bar, it would be seven ninths. Whatever the number is, that's the top. And if it's one digit repeat, that's nine. So let's skip down to this one. This is another one with nine step. Same kind of thing. That one would just be four nines. The two digit repeats, those are elevens. And the elevens are based on the nine times table. Nine goes into this four times. So that is four elevens. You can find it on your chart if you don't believe me. Uh, we have one more on here that's 11, which is this one. 9 goes into this 6 times, so that one is 6 11. So if they have bars, that's just how you have to do it. You have to just know it from the chart. 
If it doesn't have bars, you can just put the number on top of its place. So this point 3, for example, is in the tenths place. I could just put 3 on top of 10. Mm, point 2, same amount of positions, I could put 2 tenths. But fractions, you always have to look to reduce them if you can. 2 tenths can reduce by 2's down to a fifth. Or you might have already known point 2 is a fifth from using the chart a lot through the year. Point oh seven, that's in the hundreds place. The first place after the decimal is a tenth. Next place over is the hundreds. So this one I could get a seven over a hundred, and that does not reduce. This one I could put thirty-five over a hundred, but that one does reduce. Five goes into both of those numbers. Seven and twenty. If I want to take on, let's go to this one. If the decimal's in the middle of the number, copy the whole number, copy the 2, no need to change that. Just change the 0.5 to a fraction. 0.5, you probably remember, is a half. But if you don't remember 0.5 is a half, you could put 5 over 10, because it's in the tenths place, and you could reduce it. This one is similar, so let me go to that one. 4.25, I would copy the 4. If I don't know what 0.25 is, I could put 25 over 100 and reduce it. But from the chart, we might know that that is a 1 fourth. This is the easiest one because there wasn't even a decimal left. If this has a 2, this just has a 2. If one of these has just a whole number in it, you could just have two of the same thing. The 00875. I would suggest using your chart and ignoring the zeros for a second. 875 is on the chart as 7 eighths. If you recognize 875 is 7 eighths, you just have to add those bonus zeros to the bottom. That's the quickest way to do that one. If you didn't remember 875 from the chart, you'd have to put it over its place tenths, hundredths, thousandths, Ten thousandths, hundred thousandths. If you put eight seventy five over a hundred thousand, you could reduce it to that seven eight hundredths, but I don't think I would do that that way. I think I'd see the zeros at the beginning and ignore that. Try to look for that on my chart and then just add the bonus zeros back on. Likewise for this. I don't think I'd want to go tenths, hundreds, thousands, ten thousand, hundreds, thousands, millions. I don't think I'd want to start off by putting 80 over a million and trying to reduce it. Uh, I think it'd be better to recognize that the point 0.8, if you just look at that on your, um, on your chart, point 0.8 could either be 8 tenths or 4 fifths. I would use it as 4 fifths. And then one, two, three, four, five extra zeros. That's a pretty good answer. But you can divide these both by two, and then by two again. Or you could divide them both by four right now. Best answer would be a one on top of 125,000 if you reduce any of those answers. And that's our work today. There won't be a video tomorrow. Today, again, we're finishing the sheets A and B. Uh, an area like this, you would have already filled in yesterday, so you wouldn't be working on that. But after today, the A and B sheets should both be completely filled. Tomorrow, there's a third sheet to practice it again. It'll have a note from me to do it all in one day. It'll have a six in the corner. Uh, if you're having any questions, email me. I'll try to set up a way to help you because then the day after that, we'd be looking to take a quiz. The quiz has like a front back uh, and it would have a number three in the corner. When we go to do the quiz, no notes, no help, no parents, no other people, no charts, none of that. It's just the old-fashioned way. Uh, but as long as you're doing homework stuff, you can use the chart all you want, get help all you want. So that should get you through the next few days. See you later, guys.